Shit. A Cold War Spring Summer 2019. Wow. Uh, Samuel Ross fucking smashed it. Absolutely smashed it, right? So I've been a big fan of a Cold War from its very inception. More so because of Samuel Ross, right? Um, I'm a big fan of the person before I'm even a fan of the product in general. I think so. That's probably my weird kind of point of view on when it comes to these kind of things but i did try to get a last minute invite to this show but i couldn't i didn't succeed too late i guess in the day uh i had worked with samuel a few times and and um he's a sister no he's well, his partner um ace who also does a brand with him on a cu couple of projects at my other job that i had before and he came across as a very knowledgeable guy super intelligent and he had a very unique perspective on fashion in, in general and i really saw what he was trying to do with what he had at the time, right? The resources he had at the time, he was trying to do so many cool and interesting things. Whether it came with, whether it come from trainers, accessories, the utility bags, he did like. I don't think you're, I don't think you're gonna see a bag on the market that looks anything, anything like the a Cold War uh, side bags and stuff. They look so unique to anything that's on the market at the moment. Everyone kind of does the same iteration. Everyone's kind of doing an iteration of a Supreme satchel, right, or a Headporter side bag. Everyone's kind of doing the same sort of thing. But his bags are very, very unique and very, very uh, particular, right? In the way that they're done, and they have a lot of there's a lot of intellect behind these designs, right? Um, sometimes he has this tendency to do a bit of a world word salad stuff, right? Kind of similar to like Mike Eric Dyson. It can kind of get a bit annoying, but in general, I think his voice is super, super necessary in in the fashion landscape that we have now at the moment. Um, especially with all the attention that Virgil has garnered, it's great to see that Virgil's entry into the fashion scene, his appointment to Louis Vuitton has suddenly cast a light on all these amazing designers, you know, that aren't necessarily prescribed to the general um, kind of template of coming out of this big fashion school and turning at this brand and then suddenly going and do their own brand, which I don't do anyway. No one really launched their own brand, but for the most part, it's good to see different voices being highlighted in London because we, we if it, if, London, if, if anything is a melting pot, London is. Everyone says a uh, cultural melting pot. No, London is for sure a cultural melting pot. You get in a central line from any point and you're going to see so many different color, creed, races, shapes and sizes on, on the whole thing, right? So his collection was amazing. Um, his collections have been amazing, but recently he's, he's had some big investment um, he's been represented now by Carla Otto that I only learned um, through uh, trying to get into the show. So there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of buzz around Samuel Ross and what he's doing on a cold wall. He had a CFDA nomination. Like there's a lot of goodwill happening behind him. A lot of people behind, behind the scenes are kind of rooting for him, right? So this show it kind of felt as if like it's kind of like his big debut, even though he's kind of shown a lot in London and he's he's kind of been a main fixture within the London uh creative circles he talks on panels he's you know done a couple of interviews here and there his name's around i thought this was the real debut of what a cold war stands for and what they're about and what an entrance they fucking made man what a fucking entrance so i'm going to show you the video here i'm going to get it up a bit and hopefully you guys can check it out on, on the screen and then we're going to go through a bit of the collection bits but i was going to show you the, kind of the first bit so imagine starting a collection like this right first the space like of course amazing right this fucking Rundown factory, it looks like, right? Sawdust probably flying all over the place. Um, extremely rustic, just great lighting. That's it. Just, you know, update the lighting, maybe gave it a bit of a sweep. Some uh, very artistically or design specific place tape on the floor, benches, and that's it. Bare as you can get. And then look what walks out an army of concrete fucking soldiers, right? I don't know if they're all women, but if they are, that'll be fucking insane to a little kind of nod. To the current climate that's going on at the moment with these amazing touchable hoods that i love and the trainers there's a thing that sammy ross does at right, cold war that he's been very i'm very um in fraud about is that he does his own shoes you know sometimes there's a weird little detail that he kind of gets a shoe and kind of reappropriates it dyes it takes off the laces cuts the swoosh like just fucks it up so it fits with his collection so that so the models aren't just wearing fucking weird shoes out of the blue right or they're not covered in anything else and i thought it was insane so these models are out here walking, right? Storming, storming, storming. I'll fast forward a little bit more. And then after this happens, the collection starts and you're like, wow, this dude is a fucking talent, right? You see this come out. One of my favorite pieces of all the black bags touched touch onto it. Look at this, look at the bags. 
that's what an urban explorer should look like, right? I hate that fucking term. North Face and these other places used it. But the idea that, you know, living in a metropolitan city, especially living in a concrete jungle, you don't necessarily have a car and you have to carry everything with you. But it has to be done in a kind of uh, tasteful, utilitarian, functional manner. Like, everything has to have a purpose. You can't just be pockets for the sake of it. And Jesus Christ, it's so good. And that's why it reminds you so much of Rick Owens. Because I remember Rick Owens saying in an interview, he always designs his jackets to have enough room to put a book, a sandwich, and something else, right? And... You, you get this with the Sammy Ross stuff, like with the Cold War. It's just so, so functional. And the kind of play on fabrics. Look at the see-through joint here. This top looks amazing. I think someone like Wiz Khalifa would look amazing in this, exactly. Especially since he's gone, he's gone so, he's, he's uh, getting ripped up and getting bulky. The pants look amazing. Yeah, I think Wiz Khalifa would look amazing in that top, actually. Um, yeah, just a generally amazing collection. So all these different shapes, the accessories look sick. That guy that's coming up just now behind this one. That bag looks kind of like Le, 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 Le Cabossier, if you pronounce his name. Um, lamp. It looks similar to that. I love these trousers. You know what they, the trousers remind me of? They remind me of, you know, when, the, when you get a delivery sometimes, you get those um, plastic airbags that kind of make sure everything gets put inside. It's sort of like he's, he's kind of slid those inside of his track pants. They look fucking amazing. They're kind of like stitched inside the fucking pants themselves. Like fucking awesome. And from what I've seen online and stuff, everyone kind of raves about the bottoms. They say they're absolutely amazing. So yeah, look at this. Just insane. So I'll just fast forward a little bit more to so some other bits that I like too. This, these fucking performance piece structures that he's going in. I'm not sure if it's kind of like a nod to like a car, right? Going through the ends. But again, the shoes. Look at the shoes, man. He does his own thing with the shoes. Changes them up, tapes them, you know, color blocks them, whatever it may be. So they fit in with his collection, right? Because you see Comme des Garçons and Junior Watanabe, they always have a, a shoe collaboration with every with every launch, right? With every kind of a runway show. But obviously, if you're a young upstart brand, you don't necessarily have that luxury, right? To kind of have your own shoe collaboration. It's kind of, it, I, I guess shoes can be the only bit that you can kind of like falter on a little bit if you don't have an early collab or if you don't even want to, maybe you don't want to, um, put your align yourself with a brand out of the gate straight away that defines who you I mean you don't necessarily want to be a Nike Adidas boy straight out of the gate you kind of want to be able to move around yeah in kind of Hiroshi Fujiwara fashion and kind of do collaborations with everyone um, and don't and not kind of limit your, your yourself so I guess this is the kind of best way to do it but in general I just love it I love this approach Yeah, so just all all amazing work. Like, just so good. I love it. I saw someone actually in Central Line wearing that, wearing a T-shirt with this massive block, uh, this sort of, like, detachable uh, logo in the back that you can kind of take off. You can kind of uh, cut off the washing tag, the kind of tag that comes on the, the, the front or the side of the detachable hood. I saw someone wearing this big, massive T-shirt with a massive Velcro patch on the back of it. It looks fucking awesome. And, of course, the casting, man. The casting is so good, man. Um, there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of talk about diversity in fucking fashion at the moment, which I fucking hate because um, it's just the fact. It's just it's just like um, ticking off quotas, right? Like, oh, we've got three, three blacks, four whites, uh, three Chinese people. It's, it's stupid. I think brands should reflect their consumers. They should reflect the, the the influences that the designer is kind of pulling from. If you're influenced by North African culture, then maybe you should have people that look like they're from North Africa do the runway show. Just common sense, isn't it? Um, but I think. A Cold War does a great job of the casting because, number one, you know, I'm sure Sammy Ross has a, and the Cold War have a great community of people who kind of, you know, cover a wide, uh, a wide ranging of races and backgrounds. But for the most part, it accurately represents what it is to live in a tower block in London or in an estate or in a council house, right? You, you are friends, all you, your friends don't all look like you. You all look like you're from everywhere. It's like, it's, it's like the United Colors of Benetton adverts for real, for real, right? So, this is just this is just how you grew up. Like your friends just looked different, and maybe if you all stayed in the ends, you'd all just look the same as well. But it's like you know you all look different. Symbol is that. So I like that the casting is just like kind of matter of fact. It's not even done in like a kind of oh we've got white we've got black. So no, it's like this is my friends. Just all look like that. Like I have friends from everywhere in school. It just was one of those things. It wasn't you know what I mean like it is what it is. But the casting is amazing. That girl looks fucking awesome. I love the way they did her hair. Yeah, and in general, just just great, right? So amazingly well done by somebody who's not a trained fashion designer, right? But comes from a very uh, storied fashion background. I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that his dad was an architect or an artist or something. He's obviously got a degree in architecture. Is it architecture or graphic design too? Uh, he's obviously been, he's obviously worked in agencies. <clears throat> he's assisted with Kanye, with Virgil. And then talking about Virgil, 
So they go on. To, uh, this this show was amazing. I was watching some of the analysis um, on Show Studio, and they referenced Virgil, who's sitting there, as you can see in the green top. And they were saying, oh, because um, towards the end, there's an amazing crescendo, which I'll show you in a minute. And they're saying that, oh, this is basically a, a little nod to Virgil saying that, you know, he's kind of flying his wings and doing his own thing and coming underneath from his shadow and blah, 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 or that it's putting pressure on Virgil. And it was annoying to see that because I think no one says that with designers that aren't black, right? Like, not, 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 not to get into the whole identity politics sort of thing, but why should it be a contest be, between these two guys just because they happen to be black and happen to hang out with the same sort of people? There shouldn't be a contest. It shouldn't be a battle to see who is the last designer standing. They both operate in different worlds, right? They both have different interests. They both operate on a different level, right? So, and, but they can both coexist through the mere fact that Simon Ross was able to learn and craft and kind of refine his vision underneath Virgil and then do his own thing shows you that they can both learn from each other. It's a, it, they, they kind of work in, they, they work in unison. You don't get one without the other. And if we're being completely honest, we don't get a Sammy Ross without a Virgil anyway. Virgil has to open that door and show that it's possible and give and uh, allow the fashion glitterati to kind of throw their arrows at him, all his balls at him. And then whoever comes behind has less balls to be in front of them. And the one who comes behind Sammy Ross, a bit less more. But you're still going to get balls thrown at you, but not as many as maybe Kanye get, got when he first debuted in Paris, right? So this idea that, you know, Sammy Ross is somehow overtaking Virgil and Virgil must feel under pressure is fucking ridiculous, I think. And it's so annoying. You don't hear this with any any other white designer out there doing any amount of other bullshit. They're strutting down the Paris Fashion Week shows, right? It's just what it is, right? So it's like, it's very, very annoying in that respect. And and it kind of, um, it kind of trivializes the hard work that's been put in by these guys, right? And and the kind of level of cultural significance that they've both risen to where they're both being courted by hedge funds, by uh, investment bankers. Virgil is being headhunted by LVMH Group to spearhead Louis Vuitton men's. Do you know what I mean? That level of cultural significance is, is something that shouldn't be scoffed at, right? Like, and I heard a lot of them on Show Studio talking about, you know, maybe this is the natural evolution of streetwear and streetwear needed to get to this level. It's like, no, like, no again. Streetwear isn't what you're seeing from Virgil. Streetwear, by its definition, is T-shirt, hoodies and jeans and sneakers, right? And there's a plethora of brands out there that operate in LA, New York, London, Tokyo, uh, places in Hong Kong, who are off who are supplying people with standard streetwear that they love. One of the biggest streetwear brands is probably Kiff, right? That's a store, right? That's they do they do as basic streetwear as you can get, right? Hoodies, jumpers, t-shirts. Uh, tracksuit bottoms, jeans, shorts, like that world will always exist. But there was a group of designers within streetwear, right, who always wanted to kind of um, uh, cross over to the field of fashion. And at that, and before even a Virgil, even before even a Kanye, it was always kind of tricky, right, to kind of earn that validation, that kind of credibility, because they didn't necessarily get it. Even though most of the models, even though most of the casting agents, even though most of the people that organize after parties always booked people that were from the streetwear world, they didn't necessarily give them the opportunity to play in that kind of playpen, right? They're always kind of just given the after parties and then told to kind of stay out of the real business. But now we, we've kind of taken control. I've kind of I'm saying we because you know I'm 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 of the culture. I've been involved in this industry for a long time. Um, gay, gay, gay. I know. Allow. I'm cringing. I'm throwing up in my own mouth. But I've seen the progression and I've seen that. As much as there's people like Virgil and Samuel who obviously want to be fashion designers, there is a strong contingent of kids out there too who don't, who just want to be streetwear kids. But they also see what Virgil and Samuel are doing and now they, they're infused. It's, it's encouraging to say, oh, sick. Our vision, our aesthetic can uh, can lend itself to a fashion house. Right? Like someone like uh, Phil that does Dirtbag, right? Or someone like, um, what's his name? That does uh, Stray Rats, right? They have as much design sensibilities as anyone from a fashion house. But can they carry that language across a fashion house? Probably something that's maybe up for debate. But it's to say that they have to evolve to the point of fashion is ridiculous because not everyone wants to dress like that. Not, guys, for the most part, don't even want to be fashionable. Guys, for the most part, just like clothes. That's why women's runway shows are usually more um, pleasing to the eye than men's fashion show because men, women do fashion much better than guys do. It's just a, a fact, right? So... That was something I wasn't really fond of. And someone else said on the on the panel too that Virgil might have too many pies, too many fingers and too many pies. That's why he's, his fashion is kind of uh, not hitting as much as all the other stuff he does. And it's like, no, like you can't separate one and the other. Virgil's where he is because 
he's has so many strings to his bow, right? That all feed into his um, design work, that all feed into his DJ sets, that all feed into his photography, that feed into fly design, all these sort of things, they all feed into each other. You have to be like that. The, in this industry nowadays, I think someone mentioned it in the panel, you can't come into the game just being a designer anymore. You can't come into the game being a stylist, just being a photographer. You have to have other interests or other points of reference that you're able to connect to that feed into your work. But just to say, I'm going to take pictures and I'm only going to look at people that take pictures. You can't do that. You have to travel. You have to look at pictures that aren't necessarily in your field, pictures of uh, football matches, pictures of nightclubs, right? You have to explore, you have to travel, right? You have to maybe uh, do a sport, play an instrument, right? Have a hobby, something that's able to feed into your work because coming into it just 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 your art alone you're going to be left behind unfortunately we're living in a world of the hyper pollinate or whatever the, the, the slash slash the aka aka right so you have to have <clears throat> various bows to your string or various bows no various strings to your bow and Virgil's kind of a consummate um, example of that so is Samuel Ross he designed the soundtrack or the soundscape uh, for this uh, fashion show he, I'm, I'm sure, had a hand in the styling of it, right? I'm sure he has a stylist in it, but I'm sure he had uh, a kind of final say on it too. He probably has a final say on the design. He probably was instrumental in the art pieces, right? He designed a little flyer, loads of the little marketing bits and bobs that they put on Instagram. Those, that's already a, that's already six jobs title that he has. A, a, apart from being the business guy, apart from being the creative director, apart from being the founder of his own brand, there's already six other jobs that he's doing there. So, so it's not a coincidence that his work is going to look this amazing, given some money, given some backing, given some money, given some fucking investment. And that makes me now realize what Kanye was talking about when he was kind of ranting a raven about um, getting sponsored by the Medici family. or well, Where's my Medici family to kind of like um, propel my dreams forward? Because now you see the level, the, the kind of finesse, the level of finish that Yeezy stuff has got to now. And it shows you that you need that backing. There's no way that you can operate on that level or, or supply that many people in the world and not have that level of production behind you. It's impossible. To have that high level of production, you need investment. You can't just do it on your own. So, or you need some form of investment. Maybe like a Rick Owens, like where you give away maybe 10% of your company, right? And you keep the majority of it. But you need something. You can't just operate on your own completely. You need some sort of help, some sort of backing behind you. And... I'm happy to see that given the backing, given the opportunity to really perform, he fucking turned up, man. He fucking turned up. I remember Rio Ferdinand saying ages ago, and he put it, I think, in an Air Force One, that if you're from the hood and you want to be a footballer, the, the, the common thing that we used to always tell ourselves, I remember we saying it before we used to play in the cage, is that we will always make ourselves ready so that if one time Arsenal Wenger was driving through our state and his car broke down and he saw us playing, he'd think we were ready straight away. He'd think we were ready, like... And if we're given the opportunity to play in front of a open in front of a packed stadium for Arsenal, or Man United, or any other big team, we perform, and that's the idea of like you're great already, you're hood great. You just need to give them the resources in order to perform. And if you look at the first question of a cold war, you could always see a, a thread of greatness there. There was always something that separated him from what everyone else was doing. And if I'm if I'm honest, I look at the collection. It reminds me a lot of the old. Um, sorry, of the I think 2014, 2013, 2014 Rick Owens, where the guys are like hanging off the. Hanging off the rafters. Hopefully, I have it here. Where is it? Yeah, I think it's this one. Where they're kind of hanging up. Do you remember that one? Where they're hanging off the rafters and they're planning of playing. There's a guy playing a guitar. It's that kind of the stomp, the stomp era stuff. So it kind of reminds me of this a lot. And and imagine imagine someone comparing your small brand that you started with your friends, right? That's only what three seasons or four seasons in a Cold War to to, to Rick Owens one of the most widely respected, um, influential, well-run businesses in fashion now, you must be doing something right. And yeah, it reminds me a lot of this. Uh, it reminds me of a lot of that. And the other, what's the one with the stomp where the girls are kind of banding around? So yeah, and with Rick Owens, he's got a particular design language and a particular uh, tone that he just refines season in, season and out. And he does the same thing and obviously the shoes too. It's just, just amazing, just amazing to see what Cold War has been doing. So congratulations to those guys absolutely smashed it um absolutely amazing i can't wait to see this stuff in stores gonna pick up some bits and pieces for 100 percent sure and yeah man i think let's not compare both of them let's not pit them against each other people say oh now virgil has to he's gonna look he's got a lot of pressure behind him for the show in paris dude virgil ain't under pressure because of what sammy ross does he's under pressure because in general people think he's a chance or he got there by chance or by luck which is not you know which is fucking ludicrous if you if you're sitting there and you think virgil's only there by chance you're fucking nuts 
you don't become the creative director, or artist director of Louis Vuitton by chance. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen that way. He's become culturally relevant enough where his voice is being connected to youth, people, these storied fashion houses, you know, Louis Vuitton kind of wants to wants that consumer in their stores buying their stuff, tweeting, Instagramming about their clothes. So what better than to get someone that's tapped into millennials' um, tone of voice to kind of lead, spearhead that thing? And he's obviously at a point where he has to kind of evolve and develop his brand and kind of reach the lofty stages. And it also, I've always said, I've always pictured Off White being more of an undercover thing, right? So it kind of being a real experimental kind of platform they can kind of like test really kind of strange wacky ideas or you're kind of doing that at the moment it's still not probably where it should be right it's still not that great i think the women's stuff is probably better than the men's anyway it still kind of looks a bit sloppy it kind of fits a bit weird on the models even on the online store it looks a bit shit it looks a bit boxy i don't know if that's the shape that he wants but it just doesn't look that well done right but i'm assuming i would hope so that under the tutelage of Louis Vuitton, with their resources, with their atelier, with the kind of with the with the design assistants that we have working there, the interns, the, the level of product we have to put out will be of a high, 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 high level, much higher than we've seen anything that he's done so far. And we've seen, given the opportunity, you know, given the resources, with stuff he done with Nike, I think he mentioned in an interview that he was he felt really under pressure with the Nike. Um, project because if it was shit it kind of felt like you know he would have he would have got deleted from the scene but he smashed it man like the nike 10 for the most part it was a 10 out of 10 i thought that collection and it's probably apart from the yeezys they're probably the only collection i've seen people actually wear in real life that you know like they're actually wearing i see loads of people wearing the 97s the 90s the air force ones the jordan ones that i have um the court the the blazers the converses everyone actually wears the shoes so that is testament to his uh, design sensibilities that people were even though they're very expensive even though they've got a high resale value people are like nah you know what these shoes are fucking sick i'm gonna wear them um so yeah let's see what he does i'm excited man we've got we've got fucking kim jones at, at dior uh, in paris We've got Celine, we've got um, Heidi Semaine at Celine menswear debut, which will be amazing. I think that's what everyone's really looking forward to. And then, of course, we've got Virgil at Louis Vuitton. But it's, it's so encouraging to see someone like um, Samuel Ross doing such good, high-level work. And I can't wait to see what he does next, man. Um, well, oh, yeah, shit. Let me show you the end, actually. Let me, let me show you the, the crescendo. The crescendo was fucking amazing. Um, so the crescendo goes like this. Maybe a sign to like, you know, him breaking down the walls, right? So all these amazing clothes is coming out. And then look at this. Oh, sorry, I skipped it too far. This block comes out with the same st concrete structures. Breaking down the walls, tearing it all down, right? Smashing it all. Amazing performance piece. They all run back in. And then look what emerges from the middle reborn my own man now naked not afraid guy's got a bit of a piece on him too to be honest flaccid and it's dangling man he's got the detachable hood on as well so a nice current theme running through the whole show boom pushing that boulder up a hill what's that greek philosophy uh, thing where oh shit remember there's that, there's that greek story right where he pushes the boulder up a hill and the whole idea behind it is that even if it rolls back down again it's the beauty is in being able to roll it up the hill and down again, roll it up the hill and down again. There is no end point, right? Maybe that's part of it too. Who knows? But yeah, fucking smashed it, man. Imagine that being your fucking debut fashion show after the big investment. Fucking money well spent, man. Big, big, big congrats to all the Cold War team. Um, yeah, smashers!